Welcome back to HH Wheels. Today we are here at the world famous Hot Rod Farm at Conklin Farms in Monfield, New Jersey. Here for the wonderful pre-show to Let East. It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. Stay tuned to see some badass cars, some really cool people, and a lot of fun times. In the last episode on HH Wheels, you saw us modify our 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air. But now, the time has come to hit the road and show it off at our buddy's world-famous hot rod farm in New Jersey. We have the 55 loaded, now we're going to get the RV, and then we are going to head out first thing tomorrow morning. On our maiden voyage to Jersey, we stopped off in Virginia to visit some family, which proved to be the ultimate test of our patience and a good test run for the old 55. I don't like this either, but we ran out of gas. I guess we better start walking. <laughs> We talked about this earlier. We should have gotten gas and we didn't get gas. Why didn't you remind me? Right. I could feel it. I was like, something's not right. Yeah, and you were getting on it the whole way here, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> you were so hard on that gas on the way down this road to where we're staying. Uh, oh, man. And I'm wondering if there's any way that uh, I can come to you guys in like uh, 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Just, just don't rush. You know, we're, we're okay. We're just on the side of the road. It just seems to be a tradition in the 55. <laughs> we take this to a car show when we run out of gas. So did you guys run out of gas or something? I didn't run out of gas. Jeff ran out of gas. Every time. Why didn't we fill this up? You literally. You're like, turn around. But I'm like, there's, we're not going to make it. If we turn, we're not going to make it anywhere. Do you normally keep this on me or, or is your gauge just broken? It's, uh, the gauge is broken. Yeah. There's no, there's no fuel in the filter. That's great. We gotta fix the fuel tank after we just filled it up with gas. <laughs> A full tank. <laughs> we literally just left the gas station because last night, as you saw, we broke down from not having any gas. And probably now, since we ran out of gas, and we went to fill it up. Yeah. It's so loud. It's because it's not pumping anything. At least we're broken down in, like, a cute little neighborhood. Sink, sink, rock and roll. Sink, sink. The saga of the 55 continues. You know what's great, though? You're, like, kind of hangry. And, like, last time it broke down, you were also kind of in a mood. So it's always really entertaining to see how you react to these situations. <laughs> pisses me off actually <laughs> see see what i mean isn't it funny no oh fun i wasn't funny asking you all. i was asking them it's okay content creator back there shake, shake. Rock and roll. Shake, shake. towed it like a pro Okay, so we deducted the issue that it was the sending unit. We thought maybe since James ran out of gas for the 80th time that it might have sucked up some old sediment and stuff that's in the bottom of the gas tank, which we have proven that the sending unit is not bad because I took the line off the front of the filter, allowing gas to go through, like up towards the car basically to see if it'd pump out, thinking, oh, maybe either the filter itself is clogged because we have two filters on this car. We have one closer to the carburetor and then we have one inline one right here along the frame rail pretty much i don't know maybe like five feet from the gas tank so the filter's not bad we're still going to replace it anyways and the sending unit's not bad so we're hoping that maybe for some reason after it was pressurized all this sediment and buildup that's in this filter somehow got clogged along the way and then we let it sit for a few hours and now it's fine but we're going to go ahead and replace it anyways and hopefully that will fix our issue i don't see any leakage that's a happy pump you got there. I know, I'm clear. <laughs> After we survived all the shenanigans in Virginia, it was finally time to head to New Jersey. Pretty good road trip so far. Caroline's in the back doing Caroline things, I guess, editing. Rock and roll. This is awesome. After another long day of travel, we made it to the hot rod farm. Now we are gonna unload 
and get some dinner because we are both starving. Is there a car show around here? Gonna show you how the shifter feels Cause tonight is the night that we make it real Gonna take you for a ride in my brand new car Gonna take you for a ride in my brand new car Hey, I'm David Von Doom, here with my 1966 Chevrolet Nova. It took me a year and a half to build this car. It's got a 355 small block with a 671 blower, two Holley four barrels, Muncie 21 four speed, and it's got a 373 open rear. And um, we did the body work. Rich and I, Rich Conklin and I did the body work. I've known Rich for 18 years, and um, now we build cars together. How many cars do you think they'll have here today? We're hoping for 800, maybe 1,000. So it's a big expansive property here. Plenty of room for parking. Vendors, we have food trucks. We have live music. We have, it's a show and a show. I mean, we have a show in the driveway here. We have a show out in the field. It's just a, it's just a badass time. Rich Conklin, the owner of the world famous Hot Rod Farm and co-founder of Raider Wheels, started this event in 1984, which was the pre-party to the Let East 50s car show every year here in New Jersey. This incredible gathering of hot rods has grown to be a locally cherished event every year since. Hey, I think somebody's on fire. Nah, it's just a burnout. All right, here we go. We're all at the Pontiac to a burnout. Standing here with Rich Conklin, the owner of the Hot Rod Farm, and he put in this burnout pit, I believe, to sell more tires. 2003, we poured this permanent burnout pit to do permanent burnouts while there are unauthorized burnouts. But it's okay. We love it, and I do sell more tires when they burn them up. Already then. And nobody, as you can see, the crowd loves what's going on right now. This is incredible. We are here with the infamous Rob Aiulo from Landspeed Automotive, one of our favorite shops to work with. How are you, Rob? A great, uh, a great day today. What do you think of the Hot Rod Farm today? It's been great. It's been great uh, anytime they've had it here. How long have you been coming here? Since 1984. Rich and I started this, uh, what they used to call pre ladies party in 84. And uh, Rich and I also uh, made Raider wheels and the slicks and uh, building hot rods ever since. So I'm here with Brian, who has pretty much my dream car. Brian, tell me a little bit about this amazing vehicle. Well, this is a 1969 Ford Torino. I've had it since I was 19 years old. My girlfriend at the time and I went down to Florida and uh, it took us two weeks to drive it home. It didn't run very far for very long, but uh, it's about the paint is about 15 years old. I've had the car for about 30 years, um, and it's been a, a slow process to bring it to where it is today. The paint is incredible. The Thank body you. line, it's just a, it's a beautiful car to me in general. I know I'm biased, but when I saw this thing roll in, even coming down the street over here, I was just blown away. All right, Thursday, first day of Lead East. 2022 and it's our first time ever being here so i'm excited what do you got to say anything uh i have coffee i have sleep i'm ready to go all right let east here we come <laughs> Hot rodding was an American phenomenon that really started in the, the 40s or whatever it was, you know, when people, when guys came home from the war and everything like that. And it really, really grew and grew and grew. And as the different, as the generations changed, their perception changed. Because basically, a guy 
always wanted to have the kind of car that he wished he could have had when he was in high school. And as each generation came by, that meant that it was later and later cars, and then it was muscle cars and that kind of a thing. And now, the old hot rodding, as us old timers here knew it, is, is evaporating and fading away because that audience is dying. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave us a like, comment what you want to see us do next, subscribe, and of course, don't forget to get out there and get wrenching. Shake, shake, rock and roll.